In this video, well, let me rephrase that. In the previous video, we went ahead and finished up our picking up and dropping of objects. Now what I want to do in this one is I want to make our own class for world objects. So these are going to be items that we can interact in some way. And I want to use this as a base so that way we can cover things like interfaces to control whether or not we can pick an item up or how it gets interacted with. So we're going to actually create a dedicated class for this. So we're going to go ahead and start with that real quick. We're going to click C++ Classes, Project Name, and in here we're just going to right click, New C++ Class, we're going to pick Actor, and let's give it a name. Now don't hit Create Class just yet either. So let's give it a name. I'm just going to call this one Interactable. And I want to click public. And as you will see, that puts the header and source in separate folders. So we're going to have a public section for our header and a private one for ours.cpp. And I'm just going to hit create class. Now this may take a moment. In Visual Studio, you'll usually already be prompted to hit reload. So if you are, go ahead and hit that. In my case, I have to wait a bit and allow it to kind of catch itself up. So I'll see you there in a moment. Okay, I now have public and private folders with my class inside. So let's go ahead and open up our interactable.cpp and .h. And we are pretty much ready to go. One thing I want to do though, is I want to set B can ever tick to false. And I'll explain what tick is here in a bit. And remove our tick function. Go into the .h and remove the tick function from there as well. Now, let's go ahead and create something that, for example, let's go to our first person character real quick. The character blueprint. We want to create some of these properties. So for example, this mesh here of the arms, this is a first, or this is a skeletal mesh component. So we want to have the object to have a mesh to it. So we're going to create a mesh. However, we're not going to have the object in the world be something that has a skeleton to it. You know, that would be animated like these arms. Instead, we're just going to have it be like one of these cubes here. So we're not going to use skeletal mesh component. We're going to use what's called a static mesh component. And that's for things such as, well, like we're doing. Items that are laid out in the world. So let's go ahead and begin here. Uh, I'm going to create a protected section. And we're going to do a U property. And I'm going to call it Edit Anywhere, because that's what I want it to do. And then let's give it a category. So do comma, category, equals. Then inside of quotes, give it a category that you want to put it the name under. So I'm just going to do Interactable. And then all we need to do is do U static mesh component. Remember it's a pointer and call it mesh. Now in a lot of cases, even though your code completion will fill this out for you, you will often have issues where you have to actually forward declare it. So I'm going to do that above my U class. I'm just going to do class U static mesh component. And you can think of this as being a similar way of doing hashtag include components static mesh component dot h, but without having to actually include the entire header. So we go ahead and we in, we forward declare it, and then we're going to head over to the dot cpp. We're going to do mesh equals create default sub object. Now a sub-object is a template, and I don't think I went over templates in the previous videos, but I'll try to explain them as I go. But what you're using create default sub-object for is for things that you see in this list. So anytime you create a capsule component, you're doing caps like my capsule component equals create default sub-object capsule component. Same thing for arrow component, mesh, camera component, the first person mesh, and all that. So anytime you have something like that, you have to do create default sub object. 
So here's the template. Now a template is, you can think of it kind of like the type. So what type is this going to be? Well, in our case, it's a static mesh component. So we're going to do U static mesh component. And then let's give it a name. So it takes in an object name. I always just do text and then give it the name here. You can also just do normal quotes. It's really up to you. I just always do text and then whatever it's going to end up being. So in my case, I'm going to call this one interactable mesh. Now let's go ahead and include static mesh components. So hashtag include components static mesh component dot h. And then we have to do what's called, we have to set what's called the root component. So in this case, the parent, so if I hit the drop down, you can ignore the character movement component, that's unrelated. But the capsule component is the root component. It contains everything in this list here. So everything from here, 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 and here, these are all child or children of the capsule component. So we want our mesh to be the root component. So anything below it is, is a child of it. So root component equals mesh. And that's all you have to do. So now we're ready to go ahead and just compile. So go ahead and build your project real quick. Now with Unreal Engine, anytime you add a new class or make a change to a .h, like a header, you're generally going to want to close down the editor and restart it. And the reason behind that is you can have a lot of random issues that appear that make absolutely zero sense. But once you restart the editor and you try it again, it can work properly. So that's just one thing that you're going to want to get in the habit of doing. Anyhow, now that we created our class, let's go back to C++ classes, beginner tutorial, public, and here we have our interactable class. We're going to right click, create a blueprint class derived based, or sorry, create a blueprint class based on interactable. And I'm just going to leave it inside of the content folder for now, but I'm going to index it with BP for blueprint underscore then the name of the class. And here we go. And as you can see on the left hand side here, we have our static mesh component, our mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and go to static mesh and select it. So I'm going to select the cube. And here's our mesh for it. Now let's save it. And we can just drag it into the world like so. And here it is. So now I press E on it. I can still pick it up, throw it just like normal. And it's because of the way of our, how our code's set up, it's going to automatically handle setting the physics and re-enabling it. When in reality, it's just a, it's not really supposed to be moved. It's just set and static in the world. So we want to make it so we only pick up certain objects. So we've created our class. How can we easily specify what objects that we want to pick up? Well, I used to do this strictly through casting. And I've recently started working a lot more with interfaces, and those have made it even easier. So we're going to focus on doing it with interfaces. But to give a quick example of what I used to do, I'm going to go to beginner tutorial character.cpp in our grab actor function. And here's where we get the hit actor, and then we go through and we just we grab it. So I'm going to put a statement here, and this is how I would normally do it. So if, again by casting, so if we can cast to a specific type, so if cast a interactable, so the type we're trying to cast to is a interactable, our new class, and then we have the Op, or the actor that we want to cast from. So in our case, it's hit actor. So if we can cast it like this, then it means that we are good to go. That we are trying to pick up, whoops, an interactable. And I got to restart because of live coding. Give me one moment. So again, if the compiling fails, which mine might, you have to go up here and include a interactable, which mine did right here, include interactable.h. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these includes that we no longer need. 
they are grayed out but we already recompiled so we're good to go so i'll explain more on casting here in one moment let's go ahead and give that a quick try i forgot i had hot reload on i could have just used that instead now let me walk up to one of these objects and press e as you can see nothing happens if i press e again i can pick up my interactable but i and i can drop it i can pick it back up i can drop it but i cannot pick up anything else so with casting the only thing that i can pick up is if the actor that we've hit with our line trace if the class is interactable so if it's this class that we just made now that lim kind of limits you with doing the casting way. And that pretty much what I mean by that is any object that you want to pick up or interact with in the world has to be a child of, for example, a interactable. So with interfaces, the only thing you have to do is actually add the interface class to an actor. So for example, let's say I wanted to make it add it in interface so an interface is just a class to some extent so well actually that's really all it is i would just do comma public and this would be like i think it's you my interface class and then i would override some functions in here if i needed to but then all i had to do was in here simply do a check so if hit actor implements and then it's a template so implements checks if it implements an interface so in my case it would have been that you know you my interface class and that's it so that's how that would work oops so that's what we're going to end up actually setting up in the next video so we're going to switch from the casting to working with an interface that way we can add an interface to whatever actor we want and be able to pick it up so I will see you in the next video.